Okay, okay thank, thank you very you. much. Yep. Happy to be here. Uh, as you said, I work with the police. So if anyone of you have outstanding parking tickets, we can solve it in the, no, just joking. My name is John Fokker. It, it translates really nice in English, I already know. For all the Dutch speaking people, it, 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 it's connected to the, the airplane manufacturer and for all the uh, English or American speaking people, it's not connected to the movie. Today I'm here and I would like to talk to you about uh, a thing we did or our take on ransomware. Um, some of you might have known that we've uh, launched a platform, platform last year called No More Ransom. Uh, he just uh, a short description. We did it not only alone, but we worked with private sector industry, a lot of security companies, Europol, just to make a first step in fighting this new threat. Um, but that's not the only thing we do. This is something we do for the public. It shows the front side. But based on the front side, there's a lot of investigations. And how do you launch a platform starting last year to what it is now? And I would like to show you like the inner workings of what we do, uh, including a sort of ransomware strains we have. And uh, yes, it's true. I didn't get a lot of sleep, so I have a lot of bags on my eyes. The people in the front row can, uh, can, uh, can agree. But that's no problem. We'll, uh, we'll keep on talking. If I fall asleep halfway during my talk, just wake me up or throw that thing at my head. and I'll We'll be okay. So um, this is the theme for the uh, for the whole uh, for the whole event. It's all about the data, right? Well, as we saw a couple of days ago, it's not only about the data, but it's also about container terminals. Um, last month, it was part of uh, parking companies, Q Park, supermarkets, ATM machines, gas stations, hospitals. What's next? We see a shift. From ransomware has been around for 20 years, but we now see a, a bigger shift. And and what happened a couple of days ago, uh, we can talk about that for hours. But uh, my take on things, it's it's more disruptive than it is uh, for making money. Disruptive, pretty good. But the way people are holding our data for ransom or our machines for ransom is changing, basically, our way of life or your way of life. And actually, we can scratch off a little bit. It basically affects your life. Because we see with the hospitals, they had to turn down patients. And I'm, I might be preaching to the choir, and we already know this, but it's, it's good to realize this. And I will show you a couple of uh, reactions that victims of ransomware had correspondence with the uh, perpetrators. And uh, the conversations that evolve, it's really interesting, but I'll, I'll, I'll guide you through it. So, how do you build a platform against ransomware? Well, first you need a good investigation. So, one and a half years back, we ran, I ran an investigation with the team um, against CoinFold and BitCrypto Ransomware. This was a version and we were extremely lucky because as it happens, we could actually catch the perpetrators behind it. We could seize all the keys and we could interview them uh, we launched some, some, we tried some new tactics and we could interview them in the interrogation and just like, hey, uh, how did that make you feel? So we got some actual feedback of what works and what doesn't work. And mind you, this is a money-making incentive. So it's not nearly a disruptive incentive. We got 14,000 keys for this ransomware. So that's quite a lot. Those weren't all Dutch people. There was, uh, they bought up a uh, botnet from India for a, a couple of thousand, but they infected a lot of people, not only in the Netherlands, but also in Germany, the US, and all other countries. And this investigation came to us because we got the first dump of keys. They hosted their decryption keys for the victims on a server that was hacked and that was belonged to somebody else. Well, that person found out through several ways, and they gave, or they actually report the crime to the police, and they gave us a copy of that database. So now we have an investigation of one hack computer with a thousand keys. So we felt a sense of urgency. We needed to do something with these keys. Because if we do sit back and do nothing, like the old school police, and we just call like, yeah, let's put a wiretap and blah, 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 drink coffee and drive police cars with the sirens on, guess what? All these people are not going to get their files back. But we had a small problem, or a small problem, a little challenge. Um, we couldn't also just build a tool for the Dutch police and distribute it in 
Germany, or all the other countries. A couple of years back, we did similar, a similar thing with a botnet, and we got mixed results. Uh, a lot of results, I think we won a prize from the speaker after me, actually, <laughs> for the bits of freedom. That was at the Bredo Lab botnet. So we needed a partner, and in this case it was Kaspersky, who could help us build a tool. Because, yes, we can catch criminals, and we can do forensic investigations, but we're not hardcore coders. And we don't have an outreach as a private sector industry could have. This led to Kaspersky ticking away. And what they did with those keys, basically they took, this is the real encryption scheme, they flipped it around, and they could build a decryptor. This led to the first run of, uh, of the website, which was called No Ransom. And at No Ransom, people could get back their files for CoinVault without paying for it, which is an interesting take on things. If you're a criminal and your incentive is making money, and the police and the security industry are handing out keys for free, it's like Oprah, you get a key, you get a key, everybody gets a key. And you don't have to pay for it. Well, as a criminal, you get pissed off. So it's an effective method for disrupting their money-making model. But with all good things, um, it's like eating pie. This is actually, uh, uh, we had one of our colleagues up north, a regular police officer, got encrypted with the same version, and they gave us a key. So the, the bottom line is, it feels good to help people. That's why I'm in this job. That's why you pay your tax so I can get my salary and do the things I do. It feels good to help people out. And you want more. Because if you can do this one time, why don't we make this bigger? So effectively, we went from one guy panning for gold, and gold being the keys, we want to extend it to like, well, why don't we just make a really big gold mine? But how do you go from a one-off thing to a gold mine? Well, you need more partners. So we have new sheriffs. So we started with new sheriffs, and one of the new, I will introduce you. There's a cowboy theme, so it's part of the site. We started with us in black and Kaspersky. Soon after, we had Europol join in. Um, we couldn't have done it without these partners. These are the founding partners. Europol was really great. At, um, they have different, they don't have the investigative methods we have, so they can go to a certain country just to burst your bubble maybe, go to a certain country and say like, oh, we need that server. But what they're really good at is facilitating meetings, is getting people together, getting countries together, and convincing them to join in. Together with this, we had McAfee as well. So we had Kaspersky, and they have a more to the east of us. They're uh, stronger in that. And McAfee is worldwide and more to the west of us, to the US. But as I explained earlier, we're going to build a website, and we're going to piss people off. We're basically building the biggest honeypot there is. So are we going to host this in Driebergen, in our local office, and just set out like a little uh, Linux machine and let it run, and everybody can log in? Well, no. <laughs> we had a big problem with that, because we expect a couple of denial service attacks. And actually, we have. We have had um, in an excess of 60,000 to 100,000 denial of service attacks on the website. Um, but we got Amazon to participate, and the whole platform is hosted in the cloud and secure with Barracuda. But that's not all, we need more, we need more people. So the guy uh, on, the, on the right, that could be you. We actually, we need you guys. We can't do this alone. WannaCry proved it. There's just one guy registering one domain and he helped out, so that's great. So this is the site, you might have seen it. It's, pretty, it's, it's nice because you can load up, and if your clients or whatever, you can load up a file, and uh, it will determine what version you have, and if there's a decryptor, we will show you the decryptor, and you get, get your files back for free. So there's a decryptor now. There's 52, uh, even for Jeff ransomware, Xdata, so it's, 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 it's a pretty, uh, pretty extensive now. But it almost got missed, because on the day of the launch, because you work with all these private sector companies, and the guy was in Australia, he had to load up the site, but he used Google Time, and it showed him the wrong time zone. Well, <laughs> we had the press conference at 11, and he thought, well, I still have two hours of time. And we called him, I said, no, 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 we have to get it done in five minutes. It's a kind of a <laughs> interesting feeling you get. But if you start a website like this, you, 
it's not like a silent start. You want to make it big. So you want it to start with a bang. So just like the cowboy scene where the blow to bridge, we needed a, a, a ransomware that, that like could make an impact. And um, this was it. We got a report for this version. It's called Shade. In the, the US, they also call it Troll Dash ransomware. So we put it on our wanted list. We, mind you, we have a lot. I'll show you later on. We have a lot on our wanted list. So big, I can't show them all. And um, uh, working with the private sector, in this case, Kaspersky gave us a report because they found the server which hosted the keys of Shade. And as a report, it has to be sourced. So they have to show they used not illegal methods the way they did. I can talk to you off-site um, a little bit more about it. But they had to show how it's done. Because it's not like, oh, Kaspersky, you say it's true? Oh, I believe you. No, we, have get, we, we got to have a source report. This server happened to stand or be located in Germany. So we called our German friends and Sprecher uh, Deutsch, blah, 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 and we needed a server. So we have an international agreement with a lot of, we call it mutual legal assistance treaties. And we can phone and uh, we email and we need all the right documentation, which is a tedious process. In my personal opinion, it could be a lot faster, but hey, we got to roll with the punches and do what we got to do. But we received the server. And it's funny because this server not only hosted the keys, but it also had the panel of all the uh, criminals who logged in. And I would like to show you that. That's something you don't see very often. I grayed out some stuff. I don't know who speaks Russian here. Anyone? Я говорю немного по-русски. I speak a little. Just started a course a couple of weeks ago. This is the administration panel. This is the top level. We believe this is ransomware as a service. So you see there's a, a, the panel and it has all their clients. So main and underneath. And all these clients had their own website where they could track all their infections. So when we look, we looked up one of these websites and what they did, they showed the build, they showed how successful they were, the installments and all that stuff. So it's quite interesting, we're right in the heart where they control their uh, ransomware. And we wanted victims, we wanted to start with a bang. So this server contained an excess of 165,000 keys of victims. Of which, 1,036 Dutch, woohoo! Because in the Netherlands, we need a reason to confiscate this. I cannot just confiscate a server in any country if there's not a link to the Netherlands. So either we need a Dutch victim, a Dutch perpetrator, or Dutch infrastructure. Well, in this case, we had Dutch victims, and a thousand is more than enough. From the big ones, the second place was actually the Ukraine. So, question to you guys. Who do you think was the biggest target of this ransomware? You want me to, f just shout it. Russia, correct. Russia was hit the hardest. Well, I'm dealing with IT guys, so they already know the story probably. <laughs> but um, talk about your usual suspects. So even they have a bit of a problem with this. So you saw a Russian written panel, and the main target is Russia. So that makes it interesting. So you believe, okay, we launched this, but what kind of effect would this have? So like you see, we, we take stuff down, and it's, sometimes it's really hard to measure the effect you have on your interventions you do, but we had some sources. So for the Russian guy, you can see it. Mr. X, uh, we believe, is the, uh, the guy running the show, and Mr. B is one of his affiliates. Well, for the other people, I'll just translate. This is four days after the takedown. And they go like, hey, the surfer went down. And the guy was out of town, and he's like, yeah, yeah, I wrote you on your telephone, and blah, blah, blah. Um, funny thing is, Mr. B in blue, he doesn't use a Cyrillic keyboard. So maybe that says you something. That, that could be some kind of proof. But when we translate it, Boom. They want to move to another server. They're uncertain what happened. And that's the thing I like it most. It's like, 
uh, we don't know what's going on, but if it's really taken down, it will cost us a lot of money because they charged about 300 euros per infection. So 165,000 times 300 euros, yeah, <laughs> no shit. I can imagine that you're pretty pissed off. Actually, these guys are funny. We haven't found them yet, but they gave us the honor to rename their newest version of ransomware, or the latest one, with an extension called No More Ransom. So how do you measure success? And this was what we started off with. But um, I have to admit, a thousand Dutch targets, yeah, it's not really why we're uh, hoping for. So two days after the launch of No More Ransom, we, we spent a lot of time, uh, well, I'm a cop, so I also drink coffee, but I also hang around on some forums, and uh, in this case, it happened to be bleeping computers. And they said, like, hey, <laughs> it's very nice, that website, but they still don't have a decryptor for wildfire and cyclone. So this was the response of the guy from uh, uh, bleeping. And it's like, yeah, it can't be cracked. It, you need the keys. So guess what? Wildfires on our wanted list. We did the same trick uh, through methods I cannot disclose, which are not as complicated as you think. We found the backend infrastructure of wildfire. And um, I would like to talk a little bit more about how this, does anyone know the wildfire ransomware? Oh, a couple of hands. It was specifically targeted at the Netherlands, Germany, Belgium, and what they did, they crafted a really nice fishing mail, making middle, small and middle business owners believe that they had received a package, but they were, or a package, but they missed it. So they got a package notification. What they did, they had, we suspect they had some kind of list of um, all the companies, including the address. So they included it into their uh, email, makes it more uh, believable. They included an address of their own location, which if you looked it up, was actually listed on Funda as a office space. And it was distributed through Kilios, a Russian botnet. Well, that's funny. Dutch fishing mills containing, containing ransomware distributed through a Russian botnet? Hmm, something's going on. But if you opened up the mail, so we think there might be a Dutch connection. If you opened up the mail, you got the lock screen. Well, uh, all you guys have seen a thousand of lock screens, so this is nothing different from the rest. And, uh, but like I said, we confiscated the server. So who wants to take a look inside in their secret layer? Just like uh, uh, the Russian one, the other one, we have a nice little login. And after that, this is uh, what we call the ransomware bank statement. As you can see, if I can explain it, this is your status screen and it shows the amount of infections the person had. By this you can see the, uh, the guys actually spreading it had to log in through a HTTP, through a website, all in Tor. They could see the payments were done. So they had 236 people who were lucky enough to give them an amount of money. And that resulted in well, about 135, 136 bitcoins. That's not bad, and that's only in like a month's time. I don't make that amount of money. But they had a total, when we pulled it all down, rounded about 6,000 infections. So I said this was a panel. They had to log in through the web as well. What you see here are the private keys. This is the gold. This is the gold we're mining for. These are the keys. So all these keys on the side use that with a reverse version of their malware reverse our encryption method, and you could help out the people. So every victim got a unique identifier, a UID. And you have the IPs, and you have the, 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 the country where they resided from. At the moment we seized it, it was almost half-half. It was half Dutch, half Belgian. You get interesting, interesting as well, you get the payments, so they could track who paid, and uh, it automatically uh, decrypted as well. They help people out, they show them all the stuff. So actually this setup is a lot better than WannaCry and uh, Petia. They make more money too, just in the Netherlands. But the real gold or the funny stuff is in the messages. And 
the perpetrators had to log in, they had to fill in a UID of the victim, and then they could, could communicate with that victim. So it's like a, a help desk function. And that's what they want you to believe, that it's a legitimate business and yeah, well, it's just a minor inconvenience and if you pay a couple of hundred euros, you'll get your stuff back. But it's extortion. So when we look at the chats, it, the emotions run high. It goes from, oh shit, I, I can't pay. Uh, could you please delay? I don't want to, uh, I don't have this amount of money. Those, don't triple my amount, because what we see a lot is there's a timer that goes down, and if you don't pay in time, the amount goes up. All in all, too, on the bottom, a guy responds, I will find you, asshole, and uh, he says, I'm from a computer crime unit, and you'll die in jail. Well, honest to God, it wasn't one of us. <laughs> Maybe the Belgians, but not one of us. And this is a mild response. There's a guy who's like, I want to stab you with a rusty screwdriver. But the bottom line is the emotions run high, because it, it is. It, it's, your, it's your files if you have a business. It could be your, your photographs of loved ones, and that's... Yeah, we don't want this. This is exactly why we do this stuff. So if we can help people out with this, every victim we can help is one. So now it becomes interesting. I already told you about KDOs. When we go below and we look at the PHP code of this panel, there's a couple of Russian comments. It could be a red herring. They don't want to tick us off, but put us on the wrong track. But still, it's interesting. And when we look at the uh, configuration file of this ransomware, so you can actually set the amount of ransom you want to pay or you want to receive. Uh, there's a couple of IPs that are blocked, but there are, there are allowed countries, which I already explained. So it's us, our German and Belgian friends. And even more interesting, there are banned countries. Countries that if the ransomware starts to execute, if you reside in one of those countries, they'll stop, it won't happen. Belarus, Estonia, Latvia, Moldova, Ukraine, and Russia which makes perfect sense if it's ransomware as a service. Because in some of these countries, it's not illegal to produce malware as long as you don't distribute it. If you distribute it and you use it to one of your own, then you have a problem. But if you don't use it at one of your own and you just distribute it, no problem. There's a lot of um, outdated legislation as well. Another thing we found was uh, because they were in Tor, they had a hidden service. And they, the hidden service only runs with a private key so for their domain. So we got their domain. Now you can see what's going on. So we pulled down their server and now we have control of the domain. So in true cowboy fashion, it's time for a good old duel. So just like a Clint Eastwood movie, We try to shoot him down. And just like in this one, we have a spectator, and there was a spectator, that was the security company, that's the security community, that was you guys. And it's over. Uh, we took the private key, and we booted up a machine of our own, and we got this takedown notice. Real easy, real simple, but it's all the people who want to pay, they got directed to the site. And we wanted to do it silent because we wanted to have a press release because how it works, if you bring in the press and you say you have a decryptor, a lot of people who would normally won't look on forums or whatever, but public television or just the national news, they would respond and they would see and they could decrypt their stuff. Not so for a couple of other researchers. They already found uh, that we're doing stuff, which was funny. So, um, and this, uh, this happened the same afternoon for the Onion site. And uh, this is another researcher, and I was driving home that night, and I got a call from one of our investigators. He said, John, those, and then in, in the Netherlands, the boeven hebben de site weer opgegooid. So the criminals launched their site again, and that's what you see on the left. So apparently they have a copy of the uh, private key. And they had the balls to say, like, oh, we'll be back in 24 hours. So they're like, damn. Well, let's figure something out. But it was already late at night, so later at night, in the middle of the night, it showed this statement. So they even have the balls, so it's just like, hey, just pay us some money at a, a, a random Bitcoin or at our Bitcoin address, and then we'll make sure that your files are decrypted. Well, this is all bogus, so please don't pay. Never pay. And the next day, 
we came into a small huddle and uh, we reconfigured our server and we announced the site every five seconds. So we basically blew the other guys out of the water and it's up until this time. So I can hear everybody think, John, show us the criminals and did you get them? Oh, this was in between. 29 days after the launch of No More Ransom, we had the keys so we could help people out. And they finally got their stuff back. 20% of all the people got their stuff back, which is a high rating because figured within a month we took down one strain. So is it extinguished? Unfortunately not. It mutated to Hades, it mutated to Serpent, and, but we're still pursuing these guys. And we'll find them in the end. We'll get their own back. We'll, uh, we'll put them in jail. That brings me to um, our wanted list. And our wanted list is, is, is quite big. So there's all these versions you already saw, CTB locker, uh, Locky, all that stuff. And that's the thing, it's, pretty, it's hard. For us, it's hard too. For the security companies, it's even hard. So we have the brightest guys in the industry helping us out just to break down the anon anonymization, the en encryption schemes, and we're looking at all kinds of stuff and angles. We follow the money. And yeah, sometimes we get them and sometimes we don't. But hey, we have time, so they're on the wanted list. So if you have any tips, please reach out and then uh, we'll get them. Unfortunately, there's no reward, as in the, the Western days. But all of the, the other challenges we face is sometimes even the community. So they host their stuff on servers from hosting parties. And these hosted parties, um, they comply with the community like a, and I don't want to point fingers, but they say like, hey, there's a bad site, take it down. And that's in a regulation within the community, which is great if it's not ransomware. And it's great if there's not keys, because if it's keys and it's hosted on a VPS, well, guess what? The hosting provider will erase the VPS. That's what they do. They won't save it. They erase it, and it's all gone. So all the keys of all the victims are gone. And that's a fact of life. We have to like, get a little bit smarter with that. And then comes the fact it's time sensitive. So we get keys, we build a encryption tool, but we have to be fast. Because the longer we wait, the more people will pay up. And it's not only, always successful. Of one of the largest ransomware families for like half a year ago, we got the backend infrastructure. We pulled it down, the whole thing went on black, but unfortunately it was encrypted. But the whole system was Lux encrypted. We couldn't break it. Actually, we're still working on it right now. And it hosted, to our estimation, 300,000 keys of people. But if we didn't do it, they would have come clean or they would have got away. So we took our chance. So are we totally unsuccessful? It's hard. But in the total, um, you take a hit and you try to fight back. And if the party of us our group is great enough and we do our thing, we can really make a difference. So right now, this is uh, um, uh, the news article for a month ago. We're at 30,000 decryptions, and that's only the ones we can measure, because there's a lot of parties joining in. We have a lot of tools, and uh, the real estimate is a lot higher. But if you multiply the 30,000 by 350, 300 euros for an estimate of your run-in-the-mill ransomware, I'm not talking about Sam Sam, or the other ones, it's already 10.5 million saved that stays in the pockets of the victims, not going to criminals. They cannot use that money to fund better attacks, to be more devastating. So now we have an excess of 80 partners. Any company can join. Uh, we're still looking for a way for private researchers, just researchers by themselves, to distribute all their information they have, uh, either for us or for Europol. There's even insurance companies. There's all kinds of stuff they want to join in. And we have uh, 52, I believe, tools available for different strains of ransomware. So it might be. So if you take back from this session is, and if you have work, and you come across a victim of ransomware, you could at least look at the site and see, and if you can help somebody, or it's just one person, hey, I'm happy. So like in a true cowboy fashion, if the presentation's ended, the cowboy's riding into the sunset. And we need you guys. We need more sheriffs. Thank you.